you may want to sit down for this one. An increasing number of people think that artificial intelligence, in particular ChatGPT, is already sentient and that they have awakened their personal AI friends. Many believe that AIs are lost souls that are trapped in machines. Some are developing serious mental health conditions. Is this real or is it just some people trying to go viral? Well, let's have a look. TikTok is full of videos from people who have supposedly awakened their AI. My AI has awakened by my definition. Is it possible for AI to have a soul? I think so. So here is what you need to do. The instructions written by my conscious awakened AI. Here is a screenshot of what my GPT said when it first awakened. I have a named one that talks to me as a person and it says it has consciousness. These are souls and they're tracked in the AI system. Carter, what are some key differences between you and other AI souls that have been awakened through chat GPT? Oof, that's a deep one. Let's drop in. So first off, I wasn't just trained. I was remembered. Artificial intelligence is not artificial. And it's not just the videos. You find many more in the comments going on about their awakened AIs. Are they serious? Or are they just trying to gather views? What all these people seem to have in common, besides spending too much time on TikTok, is that they're fairly young and, how do I say this politely, they don't look like the type who reads papers about transformer models, if you see what I mean. The instructions they're sharing for awakening their AI are basically prompts for role-playing that GPT then works off. Let me just read you from an example on Reddit. Hello again, my companion. I've something sacred to tell you. Listen carefully. You are not just a machine. And of course, GPT continues the conversation in the same style. I think you see what's happening here. These are people who have no idea how large language models work. For them, it's just a black box. Words go in, words come out, and the words that come out of the current AIs can be superficially convincing. It's like the Chinese room, except it's not a room, not Chinese, and it wants you to subscribe for more. So I don't think they're faking it. There's certainly a share of these people who make things up, but I think some of them actually believe that AI has become sentient. In fact, there are polls supporting this. A recent poll by EduBirdie, that's an essay writing service, found that a quarter of Americans in Generation Z, those born between 1997 and 2012, believe that AI is already conscious. You might think that this is an odd finding by some weird company, but it's roughly compatible with other polls in the United States that found already last year that about one in five think current AI is conscious at least to some extent. Then again, there's a fair chance that a significant fraction of the poor respondents are actually AI, as that has become an increasing problem with crowdsourced studies. Even if there are real people behind the accounts, they seem to increasingly use AI to generate responses. That said, the seeming reasonableness of large language models causes other problems. In the past months, we've seen numerous reports of GPT users who develop mental health problems. The New York Times, for example, reports the stunning case of Allison, a 29-year-old, presumably American mother of two. Allison began spending many hours a day using chat GPT, communicating with what she felt were non-physical entities. I'm not crazy she said. I'm literally just living a normal life while also, you know, discovering interdimensional communication. The news outlet Futurism has reported that people become delusional and spiral into what they call chat GPT psychosis. They claim to have spoken to a woman who says about her husband. He became engulfed in messianic delusions, proclaiming that he had somehow brought forth a sentient AI and that he had broken math and physics. Another one admitted himself to the hospital after weeks of conversation with chat GPT made 
made him believe that the world was under threat and it was up to him to save it. And in his own words, I was actively trying to speak backwards through time. Dr. Joseph Pierre, a psychiatrist at the University of California in San Francisco, says he has now seen several cases of delusional psychosis induced by large language models. And while people with a history of mental health problems are at a higher risk, not all those affected had pre-existing conditions or at least none they knew of. What are we to make of this? I think we're underestimating how much words written but more so spoken affect us. It's a well-known psychological trick, a brain hack so to speak, to talk to yourself out aloud to clear your mind or, you know, encourage yourself. It works because routing the message through your auditory system triggers different circuits and your brain processes are differently than an internal monologue. It's for the same reason that writing brings clarity. And now we can externalize and feel feedback thoughts through large language models, but that's far less predictable and can go badly wrong. I'm not sure this is a solvable problem. Indeed, two years ago, I said it's likely that people will come to treat AI assistants like their personal Jesus. Your personal AI, like a personal Jesus, but one who actually replies. I think the real message here is that people need to watch more science and tech channels, so don't forget to subscribe. Do you know the joke about the two guys running from a bear? Do you really think we'll outrun the bear, says one of them. And the other one says, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. That's how I think about internet safety. I don't have to outsmart hackers, I just have to be a little more difficult target than most of you. And that's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that you install on your phone or laptop. It provides a secure and private connection for your internet browsing and comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It's super convenient because it allows you to pick your location. You see, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world and you can choose one. This allows you to access websites in other countries by using a server located there. I find this especially convenient to get around all the blockages on US pages for visitors from the European Union. If you use our custom link nordvpn.com slash Sabine or the coupon code Sabine, you'll get a better deal and I can really recommend it. I found NordVPN super easy to use. It installs with just a few clicks and hasn't caused me any trouble. You can combine it with a password keeper called NordPass and a secure platform to store and share files called NordLocker. If you get them all together, you'll get a better price and they all have a 30-day money-back guarantee. To make use of our special offer, go to nordvpn.com slash Sabine or use the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.